Hello, this is the Silver Watchman. Oh gosh, I'm already winded. <laughs> and welcome back to the Hopeless series. This is episode number... 35. 35 indeed. Now in a pre... <laughs> oh gosh, I'm still on the last episode. In the previous episode... We finally figured out how much a shekel was. Wait, no. No, 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 no. We actually, we found out the correct measurements of the tabernacle of, um, of the Lord. Because my math was so horribly wrong that God had to move me via the Holy Spirit and have me check it. Because I was so sure my math was right that I uploaded the video which came before the previous video, which was... And I said it with such confidence, too, like, it's probably around 8 feet thick. Meanwhile, it's like 30 feet thick, it's just like, oh gosh, no. Yeah, no, it was a, it was an absolute, um... I would have to say... Comedically sound would be the best term. That's the only thing you can call being so confident in something and then realizing how wrong you actually are. But that's just my own personal experiences. Now, in this... <laughs> oh gosh, okay. So in this episode, just to, just to go along with, with the previous episode... We're going to look up the significance Wait, can the PDA pull up something on math? Nope! <laughs> no, it didn't pull up anything on math Unless I go into the uh, interwebs, but I'm not in the mood to do that right now because Good gosh, it's like an information overload every time I type in something. Alright, let's try... No, not math. Trust. Oh gosh, it's a lot. Yes, this this video will be wow, there is a lot more in the Old Testament than in the New Testament. My gosh. There's 108 instances of the word trust, or at least alluding to the word trust in the Old Testament. So let's just take a look at Wow, it even it starts as early as Judges and it continues on to be Oh, gosh. It's gonna... But 32 instances in the New Testament. Okay, here we are. We're already in the New Testament versions. And... Oh, wow. The last... Way, um... The last writing of the word trust, from what I can tell, is in 3 John... Chapter 1, verse 14. <laughs> but I trust I shall shortly see thee, and we shall speak face to face. Peace be to thee. Our friends salute thee. Greet the friends by name. What? Alright, let's... Let's get some back background because I'm not even in I'm not even in past Luke yet in a, in the Bible series as of this video. So this I don't have too much uh, background. Oh, okay. So we're just talking about like records and different things like that. I believe so. 
But let's go back to the Old Testament because the Old Testament, without knowing anything of the New Testament, the Old Testament gives you a lot of context. So, the first instance of the word trust, from what I can see, is in Judges chapter 9, verse number 15. King James version of the Bible. We're always going to do King James and New King James, so that's just how this channel is run. And it's mostly because I grew up having a King James Bible and having a New King James Bible, and that's what's always been around for me. But that's what God had always made available to me all these years, which means in my mind, at the very least, these are the versions, at least for English, that are the best. Now there are different versions for different languages that are really, really good. For the Chinese, I don't know, I don't speak Chinese. I have never spoken Chinese, and unless God grants me the ability to speak Chinese, chances are... I'm not going to speak Chinese. And mostly since Chinese, like Hebrew, relies a lot on uh, tone. You could say one word could have at least, at least, from what I understand, like seven different meanings. And that's just one word. Which means their, their vocabulary words aren't really as diverse as English or Greek. Or German. I'm not sure about Russian languages because honestly, I don't. I don't understand. I don't have too much understanding on the Russian language, so I'll be able to get more more understanding later on. But as of this moment, the understanding of different languages is a rather bit limited. But I understand why we have so many differences because man got a tad bit arrogant wanted to build a tower to heaven. Now, here's the thing, though. Back then, people didn't understand that Earth had an atmosphere, and that outside of that atmosphere is space and absolute death. And it's really awesome that God designed Earth with this kind of, like, this, this like, really, really awesome... Like cosmic solar ray shield, because if you're outside for too long, like out in space, you literally get, uh, for lack of a better term, baked. You get cooked into whatever. You get because there's a. Because there's cosmic rays coming from the sun, and a lot of what the Earth has with the ozone layer and the different atmospheric layers, it whittles it down to a level that is tolerable for life. Now, can some life forms live in extreme environments? Yes. In fact, one of the known life forms that can do that and is really famous for that, is the tardigrade. Or, for those of you that don't know what a tardigrade is, it's a water bear. And no, it's not massive. It's actually so... T it's a multi-celled organism, but it's microscopic. Which also breaks a rule according to science that... Single-celled or... Only single-celled organisms can survive in the microscopic area because you can't get smaller than a single-celled organism. But what about the cells of the tardigrade? It's not a single-celled organism. It's a multi-celled... Let's just sell that. It's a multi-celled organism and just a microscopic thing. And actually, we could talk about that. 
Now, we're going to talk about trust. So, back to Judges chapter 9, verse number 15, King James Version of the Bible. And I do apologize for getting a tad bit sidetracked, but this wouldn't be the Silver Watchman channel if I didn't get sidetracked at some point. At the bramble said unto the tree, and the bramble said unto the trees, If in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now let's just get a little bit of background information as to what that Oh, right. Oh, yes, yes, I remember this. This was back when they were selecting a king. This is a little bit after they were... rescued from the... enslavement of the Egyptians. So, in turn... they wanted somebody to rule over them, even though they already had God. They had the priests... They had the Levites, and they had God. God still is their king. They just stopped recognizing him as their king. So they're like, well, all these other nations have a king over them, but we don't have a king. Why don't we have a king? And so... what God did is that that was kind of like one of his responses which is you don't need a king you've got me but then they still wanted a king so he anointed a king over them and then that kind of then then it, it transfer, transfers a little bit over to yeah to judges and then I believe after judges is Kings. Let's see. Book. No, 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 no. Don't click on that. Yeah, okay, so all. They're not put in order. Now, let's see. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so we have... Traditional, yes. So, yeah, it's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth. Okay, I'm a tad bit backwards. I can't remember the order in which I read things in. Yeah, so that's the order of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Le Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Eli Ecle Ecle oh gosh, no. Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, Peter, 2 Peter, John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, and then Revelations. That is the order 
of the Bible. Every single book. And oh my gosh, we went through so many as of this point. Let's see, we went through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 40. We are on the 42nd book of the Bible. Wait, how many are left? Oh gosh, that's a lot. But just like how in the Old Testament, you know, the, the books towards the end got really, really, like, small. I'm reasonably certain that's the same case in every... <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, so... Right now we're in Luke... Or, oh gosh, that's a lot of chapters. We're around in Luke, I believe, Luke 8. If my memory is correct, yeah, we're in Luke 8. 8... Chapter 8, verse number 30, 34, as of this point in this video. And John is just insanely long, but it's the same amount as Luke. Which is, uh, no, no, it's like it's like uh, three chapters less. So, so then we got, oh gosh, Acts is longer. Acts is like 28 chapters. Romans is 16 chapters. <laughs> 1 Corinthians is 16 chapters. 2 Corinthians is 13 chapters. Galatians is only 6. Ephesians is only 6. Philippians is only 4. I got an email. Colossians is only 4 chapters. Thessalonians is only 5. 2 Thessalonians is only 3. 1 Timothy is 6 chapters. 2 Timothy is only 4 chapters. Titus is three chapters. Philemon is only one chapter. Hebrews is 13 chapters. James is five chapters. First Peter is five chapters. Second Peter only has three. John only has five. First John. Second John only has one chapter. Uh, third John only has one chapter. Jude only has one chapter and revelation has a whopping 22 but every single book that we had before let's see oh my gosh oh right yeah genesis had around 50 chapters exodus had around 40 chapters leviticus had 27 numbers had 36 deuteronomy had 34 joshua had 24 judges had 21 ruth had only four chapters, which is why it was so short. First Samuel had 31. Second Samuel had, Samuel had 24. First Kings had 22. Second Kings had 25. First Chronicles had 29. Second Chronicles had a whopping 36. Ezra had only 10 chapters. Nehemiah had 13. Esther had 10. Job had a whopping 42 chapters, and there is a lot about the creation of everything inside Job. You just have to really, really be good at reading in lines. And Psalms had a whopping, oh my gosh, I went through all of that on top of that. 150 chapters. That's insane. And I remember one chapter was like over like 100 and something verses long, and it was, I was just like, good gosh, my voice. And I had to drink some water afterwards. Oh, no, 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 no. What did I press? Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah, so Proverbs had only 31 chapters in comparison to Psalms. And Psalms is just a is just a series of different, like, songs written by King David. And I believe it was, it was like, half of it is made, but then I believe it's also finished up by his uh, son, Solomon. I believe so. And Proverbs was... Was pretty much written by Solomon, if my if I'm correct. Ecclesiastes is a uh, has twelve chapters. The Song of Solomon was, yeah, that was only about eight chapters. That was one of the more um graphically uh, descriptive books of the Bible. 
Isaiah had 66 chapters, Jeremiah had 52, Lamentations had 5, Ezekiel had a whopping 48, Daniel only had 12, and yet a lot of prophecies are in Daniel. Hosea had 14, Joel had 3, Amos had 9, Obadiah had 1, Jonah had 4. Yeah, so the book of Jonah, you know, where, where Jonah basically goes, God, tell me, where, where must I go? What must I do? And God's response is pretty much, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And Jonah's basic response is, he noped so hard out of that, he ran away from the Lord, a, I'm pretty sure a good whopping a while, even to the point where he went onto a boat to get away <laughs> from the presence of God, because he's like, I don't want to do that, I'm not ready to die yet, let me live a little longer. And so out of fear for his own life, because, you know, that, city's was, that city was absolutely, absolutely just full of evil. Where is... Okay, so up next was Micah. Micah was only around seven, seven chapters. Nahum was around three. Habakkuk was around three. Zephaniah was around three. Haggai had only two chapters. Zechariah had 14. Malachi, which was the last book of the Old Testament, only had four chapters. And then we're back to then we're back to like the New Testament. But Matthew had 28. Which is why it took me a little while and I had to do a two-hour video. Mark only had 16. And Luke has 24. We're on chapter 8. So keep in mind, within every uh, every single chapter, in every like 15-minute section of the Bible, I'm able to get through two to three chapters at a time because some chapters have a lot of verses in it. Like uh, there's some that will have like up to 60, and that takes, that takes a little bit of time to get through it, especially when you have a speech impediment and a stutter. Now, if you're reading it by yourself, like in your head, if you have a stutter in your mind, then... I'm not sure how that works. Because I know, even though I could, my ability to speak is hindered because of my stutter and my lisp. Which, honestly, does come out at the worst times. Imagine, you know, you're trying to... You're trying to teach a group of people and, you know, all of a sudden you start stuttering and lisping and just like tripping over your words pretty much. You're just there like, oh gosh, it just gets worse. And every time you open your mouth, you're just like. <sighs> you sound like Porky Pig from from the Looney Tunes. Anybody ever remember that? You know, the, the old like 19, uh, 1980s Looney Tunes. You know, with like Bugs Bunny, Porky Pig, Daffy Duck. In fact, out of all of them, I felt like I related most to Porky Pig and Daffy Duck because Porky Pig had a stutter and Daffy Duck had a bad lisp. And I had them both. <laughs> all right, to, after years of, of getting past that, though, by the grace of God, I'm able to speak coherently enough that you can understand me. Now... Will I... Ever not have a lisp? I mean, I hope that happens. By the grace of God, I hope that happens. Because it gets very hard to talk to people at times. Especially to somebody of uh, the opposite uh, gender. And it's hard to sound very uh, professional and, you know, strong and manly when 
you're stuttering like Porky Pig and lisping like Daffy Duck. That, that, that doesn't, no, that doesn't do anything for anybody. That just kind of makes you look like you're incompetent. Unintentionally incompetent. But yeah, no, that's just me uh, kind of venting a little. Where was I? Oh, right. Yes. So, in all honesty, I have absolutely no idea what I was legitimately talking about before. So, um... (laughs) Let's just go along with what I ju- what I was just talking about, and we're gonna talk about anxiety. Wait, no, no, no. Before we were talking about no, no, no. Peace was a different. No, no, no. Peace is in a different series. Even though we should continue on that tangent at some point. Healing, marriage, resurrection, fear, strength, hope, anxiety, forgiveness, joy, trust, trust, trust. Here we are, trust. <sighs> After Judges, it takes a couple of books, but then we see it it, it mentioned again in chapter 2 of Ruth. Chapter 2, verse 12, King James Version of the Bible. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward will be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under those wings thou art come to trust. Now, Trust. A lot of people put their trust in God. Even I, even I, put my trust and my faith in God, and that He will, and that He He will help me out of whatever situation I'm in. But I don't just trust Him in the hard times. I trust Him and have faith in Him in the easy times as well. In the times where like there's great blessings and great everything going on, and then you know, in the times where it's tough, and I. Don't exactly have the money to get all the stuff that I need. And that's interesting for a time. Because there's some people that are trusting in God, but they're only trusting God during their hardest times. And 2 Samuel is a good summary of what it's like. We're going to look at 2 Samuel, chapter 22, verse number 3, King James Version of the Bible. And we're going to see this statement, and it's going to... It's the best... No, it's not the best. It's a very good illustration of what trusting God is like. The God of my rock, in him I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. My high, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. And we're just gonna, oh gosh, no, I lost it. Here we are, and we're going to turn that into a nice handy dandy. Little image, so that way you guys will be able to see that. At some point in the future. So in turn, um, the God of my rock, in him I will trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, my refuge, my savior. Thou savest me from violence. I would have to say, 2 Samuel chapter 22, verse number 
that's a really good verse to explain what trusting God is like. Because if somebody has something against you, like uh, legitimately, like or Ill illegitimately is better, is better to be put into words, where they, they want to hurt you and destroy you. What God normally does is he turns those weapons that are being faced towards you and he just kind of makes it makes their plans fall apart. <clears throat> and another another verse in Samuel shows uh, pretty much what happens when you do have your trust and your faith in the Lord. So we're going to look into 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse number 31, King James version of the Bible. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust him. Now, what is a buckler? Well, for those of you that don't know, we're actually going to go into the interwebs and see what the word buckler means. That's the word peace. Buckler. Buckler. There's buckler beer? Hey, there's a heater shield, kite shield, pavis, targe. Targe? Targe. 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 Well, now we're in the shield section, and <clears throat> let's see, Boucher shields, or Bush shields, or Bush. There we are, we got buckler shield. The buckler shield is a small, is small in size, and made of iron slash metal, has a round shape, oh, has a round shape and is lightweight, ideal for use to, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although too small to block much of the body due to its size, the buckler shield could be hung from the soldier's belt. Oh wow, we're actually in a whole bunch of different sections of shield. Tarj, Boucher, Viking. What kind of shield is my shield? You know, you, you guys have always see it. You, you see that I have like two types of shields. Okay, so there's a lot of circular. Um, I mean, it's, it's obvious that, that, that one of the types of shields is... Uh, is... Well, let's see. I mean, there's three parts of a shield. There's the boss, also called an umbo, a round center part of the shield, reinf reinforced and made for deflecting balls away from the center of the shield, often made of wood or thick metal. These were mounted on round shields. Oh, that's interesting. The bush is a notch cut on the top of the shield to resist a lance when jousting. An arm is the straps inside of a shield which an arm was passed into in order to carry the shield. And that is interesting. What is this? Let's see. Okay. Okay. Armor. You know what? This is a good topic for the next episode of uh, of the Hopeless series because, oh my gosh, there's a lot of information on shields. And I still don't know what type of shield mine actually is. It seems to have a lot of similarities to... Yeah, you have the, the Watchman shield, which is... <clears throat> which is like the, the display thing that you see, and that's more like a... That is actually more like a kite shield, but it looks like it's a, it's a combination of three different types of shields. Now remember, I designed that under the influence of the Holy Spirit. So let's see. Yeah, there's a whole lot of... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. 
Yeah, no, I definitely don't have time considering the fact that we only got a couple minutes left. So you know what? Glory be to God and blessings be upon each and every single one of you. Thank you all for watching. And seriously, it's an honor that I get to do this every single week. But throughout the week, like I'm working on this and in, uh, in what little free time I've got. Like if I'm not if I'm not resting after absolutely working hard, I'm working on these videos and it's an honor that I get to do it. And I hope that someday, someday, by the grace of God, I'll be able to open up my own ministries where, you know, it'll be something that would be impressive unto God. Or God will look down on it and be like, wow. That's pretty cool. Well, thank you all for watching. Glory be to God and blessings be upon every single one of you that watches these videos. Even to those of you that hate me and that hate God. Because I know one day, one day, you'll come to God. And this is the Silver Watchman, signing out.